what's your take on on rushing to meet a festival deadline? Yeah, I mean, it's you know people get wrapped up in the festival deadlines, right? Um, and especially the ones like Sundance and Tribeca and whatnot. And, and we fell into that that same kind of trap. And um, we had finished filming, uh, and then had literally two months to finish a cut for Sundance because we thought you know Sundance is the end all be all. Um, and let's just do it. Let's do two months of crazy marathon editing. The and entire film. Too. The, the entire film. From, we had nothing, like yeah. a blank timeline. Let's finish a film in two months. It's just completely, completely insane. I uh, wouldn't recommend it ever. Um, yeah, yeah, so. It was completely just based on that, that deadline, and it was like, it, we weren't really taking the film's best interest in mind. It was just more about, like, getting that deadline and you know we thought that it would be good because it would give us deadlines and deadlines are always good for artists and blah 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 but it's just like you have to be really careful about that because now we found that we've had to go back and do a lot of work and unpack a lot of stuff that we would have been able to just go through if we wouldn't have imposed those unrealistic deadlines in the first place so the film has yeah. suffered a bit because we pushed so hard yeah. for that first one and made our film around someone else's deadlines. Yeah, and ultimately it's good to have a festival strategy. I mean, that's hugely important, and we're certainly going to do the festivals uh, when the film is done. But developing a strategy for festivals is very time-consuming, and when you're trying to make a movie and edit a film, it's just not... It, there's no way to put the, the two worlds together. I mean, if you're when you're editing the film, make the best film that you possibly can, and that's that's ultimately, in the end, where and how you're going to find success if you have a great film, right? So, yeah, we made the mistake of trying to do both at the same time, and it just it didn't. Not a good idea. How many hours of footage were you working with when you when you had this blank timeline? What were you oh, looking man. at? Yeah, it's hard these days, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. everything's digital, and, and um, right. back in the days when it was tape, you just count the number of tapes, right? Because roughly that was an hour each tape. Mm -hmm. but, uh, How many terabytes are we Terabytes at? were, <laughs> I think we're at um, six terabytes, yeah. mm -hmm. something like that, which is a huge amount of footage. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> and you have to back up that footage, right? And so right. we just have gobs and gobs of hard drives at the office right now. It's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the majority of the footage is also in Haitian Creole, or probably... What, half, half, maybe, half yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. So getting it translated and and having to be up against those deadlines as well, like it just it just kind of became this nightmare. It's probably a couple hundred hours of footage, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's got to be at least that. At least, yeah. yeah. What do you do to recharge when you feel like you're too close? Like sometimes with filmcourage.com, mm -hmm. I'm just too close to it and I have right. to step away. I'm answering emails all day. I'm putting up articles. So what do you do to kind of say, you know what, okay, I have to just walk away because I'm starting to get too close to it and too frustrated and because things aren't working? Yeah. Is there a secret to that? Is there a zen Yeah, I tradition? mean, I think luckily it's been <laughs> happening for so long that we can, you know, slot other projects in and other creative outlets in to where we can kind of put our full selves into that stuff and actually rest from the source. We've, we've had to do that more than once. Yeah. Like two or three times. Just go and make a short film or do another, do or, you know, stuff like that. And that, I think that that's kind of the best way because every time you do a project, you learn something and being able to come back and take, take that, put that energy back into the source has been good. To recharge. Yeah. Right. And one, yeah. Of the, one of the challenges of making documentaries or films in general is that uh, you, you start off with a really exciting idea and you're really pumped about it, um, but you don't see the payoff for two, three years, you know, with my first film was four years basically. And so I think it's important to have like little successes and victories along the way um, where you're taking breaks from the larger project that you have going on and you're feeding yourself with these smaller projects creatively and just feeling good about what you're doing and, what, and about yourself, you know? Cause right. Get, it can get um, pretty depressing after you know a few years. You've been with the same project and you haven't seen anything come of it. It's it's, it's a struggle. Yeah. Right, and you see other people that are like yeah. on right. pedestals, and then you go, "What am I doing wrong?" Exactly. So, yeah. Right. That's and you but and you don't hear about those other people on pedestals until they're on the pedestal. <laughs> you know, it's like you don't hear about the four years that they've right. been working to get there, right. and so yeah, it's it's definitely hard. Mm -hmm.